because I don't know, I don't know about you, but when I when I know that I'm right, I believe that I'm right. But there's but there's sometimes there's sometimes that you you're not sure if you're right. You, you kind of think or you kind of think maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. But when you know that you know that you know that you're right, you think that you're right. And sometimes what the scripture is saying is that even when we know that we know that we know that we're right, sometimes we're wrong. You can do the right thing and have the wrong heart. So, um, so, so it's been a while. But Jonah, at the end of everything, he did the right thing. Like he did what God told him to do. And um, all of us as Christians, we our desire is to do the will of God. But God is saying, I don't want you to just do the right thing. I want you to do the right thing in the right heart. And I think, and I think sometimes the reason why we struggle in our heart, and the reason why I struggle in my heart, is because I have the wrong perception about God. Sometimes the way that I'm looking at God, some some the way that the, that I'm thinking about God is not the right way. And, and, and today we're going to talk a little bit um, from the book of Jonah about that. But the reason why I bring it up is that when you come to God, you have a tendency to perceive God from what people say, and even from what we read in the scripture, you perceive God to be a God that when you have a problem, you don't want to go and talk to him. That, that when you commit a wrong act, because look what he did to Nineveh. And we sit down and we look at Nineveh, that he was saying to Nineveh, you need to repent or I'm going to destroy you. When you start thinking about that, that God destroys people, I'm doing something wrong, I don't think I really want to go to God and talk about it. But Nineveh had no relationship with God. The person that had a relationship with God was Jonah. So if we want to see how God works with people and how God interacts with people, it's not good to compare yourself to Nineveh because you actually have a relationship with God. You need to compare yourself to Jonah. Jonah did everything wrong. He did everything wrong. He took his money that God blessed him with and bought a ticket to go on a boat so he could run away from God. God said go east and he started running and dashing west. There was a huge storm. God didn't kill anybody. God didn't harm anybody other than to scare them. There was a huge storm to give him a message to go back home. In the storm, if I was Jonah in the storm, I would have started praying and said, God, I know that I was supposed to go east and I'm going west and all these men's lives are in danger. Lord, please, I'll go, I'll go the way you want me to go stop the storm. But well, Jonah, Jonah didn't do that. Jonah said, boys, throw me overboard because I'd rather die than do what God says. We sometimes miss that message that he's not being a humble person that's loving towards the men on the ship because he wants the men on the ship to live, but he still wants the people of Nineveh to die. So he said, it's better for you to throw me overboard and let me die so the people of Nineveh can die because I refuse to obey God. I refuse to obey about God. Now, if my father was God, my father would have grabbed Jonah by the neck, <laughs> dragged him all the way over to Nineveh and said, boy, open up your mouth because if I lick you, you piss. <laughs> but God didn't do that. God allowed him to go into the water that he requested. God allowed a fish to eat him so he didn't drown. And then God allowed him to sit in the fish alive. And now Jonah's mind starts thinking and starts churning and thinking that, you know what, man? God has been good to me. And I don't know why I'm in this predicament. It doesn't make sense. So he repents and says to the Lord, Lord, I made a mistake. Save me. And then God allows the fish to vomit him out. He goes and does exactly what God says. Most times as parents, because I, I speak from my own experience, when I do what my dad says, he's cool. He's cool. If I cut the grass and he says cut the grass, he's cool with me. Even if I'm mad about it. If, I, if he tells me to go pick up something from the grocery store and I don't want to do it, but I do it in the timing that he says, he's cool with me. Even if I'm angry and I'm stomping up the stairs and I'm in my room, vexed. Because he doesn't really care about how I'm feeling. He cares that I follow through with what he said. But what happens with Jonah is that even when Jonah follows through with what God says, God says that I'm not satisfied with you just doing my will. I'm not satisfied with you just doing what's right. I want to check in with you and I want to see from your spirit, like, how you doing? And then Jonah looks at God and says, I'm angry. I'm not doing good. I'm upset that you didn't kill these people. 
he, he, he began to tell God the truth. And even after he told God the truth, God allowed for a vine to grow over him, and then he allowed for the vine to die, and, they, and then he had another conversation with Jonah, he said to Jonah that, um, how do you feel about the vine that died? And Jonah said, I'm angry about it. Why'd you let it die? They have a conversation about that, and then, and then God basically says in the ending, is that you value the vine more than these people, but I value the people more than the vine. The reason why I say is that the perception that we have about God is not true. That he's a warmonger, that he, that he hates people, that he wants people to go to hell, and that he's full of anger. All that stuff is not true. There is discipline in God because God disciplined Jonah. When Jonah decided not to do his will, he went into a fish. There is discipline, but the discipline all comes out of a spirit of love. As human beings, we love. We love, but, but we make mistakes because we're human. We have errors in us. But when it comes to God, there is no error in God. So Bill Cosby could go on the television screen and practice perfection, but he couldn't practice the same perfection off of the screen. But God is not practicing perfection. God is perfection. Amen. So when I'm going through something and I need to discuss it with God, God will actually discuss things with me and, and have a conversation with me and work with me no matter what I'm going through. That's a come, um, it, it's not wise for us to make excuses and say that, you know, I'm going to make myself right and then come to God. Because God is saying that I don't really care about you being right per se right now. I care about you coming into relationship with me so we can have a discussion so you can know who I am. And when you really love me, the love that you have for me will change you. And the love that I have for you will change you as well. But at the end of the day, God is a good father. God is a father whose first objective is to get your heart right. He cares about your heart. And he also cares about your action, but he wants every action to be done with the right motive, with the right heart. And, and in our walk with God, the key to our walk with God is to really understand who He is and understand His character and understand His love. Because when you understand how God really feels about you, then you now recognize that you can speak to Him differently. When you look at how Jonah behaved, the one thing that is great about Jonah's behavior is that he was real. We're living in, in, at a time period where people are fake. Even in our prayers, sometimes when we're all by ourselves, we're fake. Lord, help us to pay our bills. Help us, Lord God, I pray that you would help me to pay my car note. Lord God, I pray that you would help me um, to have good health. And you're asking for all those things, and you have anger and bitterness toward another person. But you're not asking, we're not asking God to help us for that. We're at work and we're looking at our boss, and you can't stand the man because he's just on our body. You can't stand him. But when we go into prayer, we pretend like all that's not real, and we talk about all these tangible things like bills and, and blessing and those kinds of things. When God is saying that, you're my son. You're my daughter. Sit down with me and, and let's get serious. Let, let's talk about some serious stuff. Tell me what's, what's really troubling you. Even if you don't think I can help you, even if you think you're going to get into bigger trouble, talk to me. Because if you talk to me, even in the talking sometimes, we work out solutions with each other. Because at the end of the day, no matter what Jonah wants to say, Jonah has to say that God has given him as much grace, if not more grace, than the people of Nineveh. It's good to have a good father. Because even though he's good to other people, he's going to be good to you. And when we're looking at God sometimes, that we want to create a God who, who works on principles. And even though God does work on principles, God is not trapped to a principle. So a principle says, I wanted to read um, from Jonah chapter 4, verse 9. It says, Jonah chapter 4, verse 9. It says, and God said to Jonah, doest thou well to be angry for the Lord? And he said, I do well to be angry and even unto death. Then said the Lord, thou hast had pity on the Lord for which thou hast not labored, neither madest to grow, which came up in the night and perished in the night. And should not I spare Nineveh, thy great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle. Even though that scripture is talking mostly about the people of Nineveh, I want to focus this morning on God's relationship with Jonah. God's relationship with Jonah. Um, we've been reading the scripture, looking at it for the past couple of weeks, and you can see that God has a very unique relationship with Jonah. First of all, he speaks to him, he gives him messages, 
and then he, he gives them commandments, and when Jonah disobeys them, it's as if God doesn't even really get mad at him. God gives him a limited punishment to change his mind so that he'll go out and do what God says. And after he does what God says, God reviews back with him that he did everything right, but at the same time, um, I want to talk to you about the, about the situation because it seems like even though I command you to talk to Nineveh and you did it, that you're not happy with it. So then God asked him, are you angry? He said, of course I'm angry. I'm angry that you allowed Nineveh to live. I'm angry that you took away this vine. I'm angry at you. And this is the kind of conversation Jonah is having with God. This is a conversation as pastors we discourage people to have with God. Like I discourage you to yell at God. I discourage you to get mad at God. I discourage you not to, to, to get into argument with God. I, like, like I would say, don't do that. But God is, is so open that, that, that he actually will let us argue with him. The thought of arguing with God makes absolutely no sense because he's always right. And if he's right and we're arguing with him, then obviously we're wrong. But God is willing to open up himself and allow us to argue with him, allow us to fight with him, allow us to cry and tell him all of our problems, even though he already knows our problems. Because what I've discovered about God is that God is a good father. That's what I want to talk about this morning. It is God our good father. Is that in life, because of, perhaps because of our background, perhaps because we want to succeed, perhaps because of people that we've had conflict with, we, we are always seeking to become better, or at least always seeking to at least survive. That in such a way, it, it seems as if, if we make a mistake, that we're going to be held accountable for it, and we're going to have a problem in our life, and we're going to be judged. That we now translate natural experiences with God experiences. So when I make a mistake with God, I'm assuming when I make a mistake with God, that God's going to be mad at me, that God's going to be angry with me, that God is going to punish me, that God's going to rain fire down on me, and God's going to do all kinds of things to me. 